Let's talk about criminal inadmissibility to Canada based on the nature of the offense. But before I move forward, please subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. Criminal inadmissibility in Canada could affect permanent residents of Canada and foreign nationals depending on the severity of the criminal offense. But before we discuss that portion of criminal inadmissibility, we need to understand the nature of criminal offenses in Canada. If an offense has occurred inside Canada, then we can look at the way it has been prosecuted and also the laws governing that prosecution. But if the offense has occurred outside Canada, then we need to find the equivalency in Canadian criminal code or other acts of the parliament. In other words, it doesn't matter how an offense is prosecuted outside Canada. What matters is the equivalency in the Canadian law. So let's focus on the Canadian law. The Canadian law, generally speaking, divides a criminal offense into two categories. Offenses that are prosecuted summarily and offenses that are prosecuted by way of indictment. Summary convictions or summary offenses are usually less severe offenses. Very loosely defining them means a summary offense is something that you do not have the right to a jury hearing and also the maximum duration for jail time is usually not necessarily six months there are summary offenses that they go beyond six months but many of them limit the prosecution to fines or jail time that is normally less than six months However, indictable offenses are more severe kind of offenses and the duration of prison time could go beyond six months. And in fact, sometimes it could be life in prison or several years in prison. And of course, just like summary offenses, they could also have an element of financial fines. Many of the offenses that appear on the Criminal Code of Canada or other acts of Parliament, they are hybrid offenses. It means that they allow the prosecutors and the justice system either to prosecute a person summarily or by way of indictment. The reason that they are doing this is just for the people who have, for the first time have committed the offense. They do not face the same issues and problems with somebody who is a repeat offender. In this situation, when it comes to the immigration to Canada, unfortunately, regardless of way of prosecution, under Section 36, 3A of the Immigration Act, hybrid offenses are always considered indictable offenses. So if we have pure summary offenses, the situation is different comparing to hybrid offenses and also indictable offenses. Generally speaking, summary offenses, if they happen only once or you have multiple charges, but they are all coming from one incident. In those situations, they don't make people inadmissible to Canada. But if we have multiple occurrences of summary offenses at different occasions, then foreign nationals become inadmissible because of them. If we have indictable offenses, even one indictable offense makes a foreign national inadmissible to Canada. But not every indictable offense make permanent residents of Canada inadmissible. An indictable offense makes a permanent resident of Canada inadmissible to Canada that is considered serious criminality. Discussing serious criminality, it's outside the scope of this video, but I promise to make another video talking about criminality versus serious criminality. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Al Parsai. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I teach immigration consulting at Ashton College. I'm the author of the bestseller book, 88 Tips on Immigration to Canada. You can check out your purchasing options by visiting Amazon websites or visiting 88tips.ca. I have 10 years of experience as an immigration consultant, and I have dealt with different aspects of inadmissibility to Canada. Please subscribe to this channel, enable notifications, like this video, and share it with your friends. See you soon.